Hello and welcome Whoa. to episode 53 hey. of Shared Discovery. Hey, hey. What the are show. You do- what and are you doing? Who's doing your job? Cause this I'm is my right. job. Okay. okay. Well, now I'm <laughs> off uh, off kilter. What's going on here? Hello and welcome to episode 53 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to the many exciting, enjoyable aspects of games and gaming. Man, you, change you, it up a little bit. Yeah, you took you took me off mm-hmm. uh, my I'm your host my Victor. <laughs> I'm your well, I'm your host Savannah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm your host Victor, and today I'm joined again by Savannah. This is our follow up episode to episode fifty two. Mm-hmm. So, Still character customization. How this, are you doing I'm since doing the last episode? Good. It's been five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Still no, good. It's, it's been like two minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what I'm are we good. doing? I'm what fine. is this episode about? So this one is part two of character customization. So first we talked about, you know, your character's appearance, their clothing and stuff, and now we're gonna focus on gameplay. Mm. So, how you're able to customize your gameplay experience with your character and how the game allows you to do that. Mm, Yes, and so things like what tools, what strategies Mm -hmm. the games will give you from the beginning to the end of the game. To to, help you win the game. To do that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we talked about last episode a little bit about what you've been up to, mm-hmm. but is there anything else that you have been up to recently? Uh, other than beating Dracula? Drawing. <laughs> Always drawing. <laughs> draw, drawing, drawing. I what draw. are you drawing? I draw a lot of things. I draw D&D characters. I draw Pokemon. I draw fake mine. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you, you have drawn some really cool fake mine mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. Redesigned for the 18th time on some of them. Which ones? <laughs> Your yeah. Atkins. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, look. Something really cool that we did do, and we've been doing, is we've been playing Pokemon D&D. Yes. And so what we that did is, is we did some store hopping yesterday, mm-hmm. and any of you that have any experience with Pokemon minis, you know there are those that are made out of like toxic sludge. <laughs> they just they're very look off-brand. so terrible. They're painted terribly they're sometimes. They're painted terribly. They're not cut well. Yeah. They vaguely look like Pokemon. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we bought a bunch of those that I am going to be repainting to actually look like the Pokemon that they are. Yes. And I'm really excited about that. Mm. It's going to be a lot. Yeah, it's, I appreciate like that. So they're about <laughs> 50 cents each. So you can tell the quality of these mm-hmm. is not the greatest. Yes. When a normal Pokemon mini that you'd see at the store is about $10. Yeah, each. To, for, to get the quality is about mm-hmm. $10 each. So that's what we've been doing because in the Pokemon D&D, you play as a Pokemon trainer and you have little... You have Pokemon. Yeah, you have your Pokemon. You're they a trainer. You you, they follow mm-hmm. you around. You have battles. And so we use the grid and we For want... D&D. Yeah, but we wanted to have ones that are small, yeah. like, like <laughs> to fit within the, the square, mm-hmm. the one-inch square of the D&D grid. But most of our figures pretty are a lot bigger <laughs> than that. Like my Chikorita yeah. is the size of my character. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's what we've been yeah. up to a lot lately, mm-hmm. lately uh, is just thinking about D&D and Pokemon mm-hmm. D&D specifically and speaking of D&D go watch our uh, D&D gameplay Good segue. in I guess at you share discovery host. show <laughs> at gmail.com <laughs> yeah we I definitely recommend if you like live shows or the podcast listeners and you haven't checked out what, what we do on the YouTube mm-hmm. come watch or if you missed our last episode where we said go watch the live show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you missed that episode, <laughs> go watch that live show. That was awesome. The 50th it, episode it's game not, show. It's, it's an experience that will be very different. I mean, mm-hmm. A lot of these podcasts you can listen to, whatever. That one you need to you watch. you got to watch that. It's it was so silly. So much fun. We were in the auditorium. We're on stage. We're doing physical games mm-hmm. that you can probably hear the chaos for, but yeah. they what do you, would they hear? Just dice? Yeah, dice and like <laughs> people laughing and yeah. like kicking a burrito across the stage. Oh man, I feel bad about the dice one for the yeah. podcast listeners mm. because... It was probably really I, loud. Yeah, four yeah, people our... ran and grabbed dice at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about that. was super fun. I should have fun. just taken the whole bucket. <laughs> like, you gotta go give in. your competitors a chance. No, so Check that out. The way that you'll find that is on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And on Instagram, we put links to our shows there as well. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get in contact with us for questions, if you want to say, oh, I like how I customize my character in this game, Mm -hmm. you can do that. Any feedback, anything you want to chat with us with. Comments, concerns, questions. That's a good idea. Anyway. Yeah, that's a, listen, look at you. We'll get there. You are the host. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that at shareddiscoveryshow at gmail.com. So as we move into customizing your gameplay experience, 
I gotta ask you. I was gonna, I wanna ask you. Do you prefer, I'm taking my show back. Okay. Do you prefer classless or a class-based system in the RPGs that you play? So, probably, it's, it's hard, but probably classless because I, as we've discussed in the previous episode, I like a lot of options to build exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. So probably classless, where I can just put points into a bunch of different things to make exactly the unique build that I oh, want. Okay. But I also do like classes. They're cool. <laughs> I don't know. It's different. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's different. They're very different experiences because the classes are shaping you. They're giving you limitations in the way that you mm -hmm. play. But as we know, limitations can breed creativity, yeah. and they can take away some of the trust of decision paralysis. So sometimes I like having a class, so then I have to make these constrained choices. Direction. It gives you a track to go on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm on this track. I'm not playing Minecraft and can go anywhere. Yeah. Right. I'm I not have, saying I, I, I like sandbox games. <laughs> uh, but sometimes I really, yes. really enjoy the classes. So mm -hmm. I really like RuneScape. For the fact I really like D and D <laughs> that I can choose. Oh yeah, D and D is a class system. I I thought you were okay. <laughs> I thought you were saying what you like about I, class systems. So uh, I just uh, uh, I like anyway. classless systems like RuneScape. Oh okay. For the flexibility to say I want to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I love that game so much when people are like I only level fishing. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> That's, That's awesome that you can do that in the game, and you don't have to be a fisherman class. Yeah, there there are no classes. There's it's no just class. You, you do whatever you but want. Sometimes that's overwhelming. Sometimes in RuneScape, I'm like, I don't know what to do now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think overall, I lean more towards class-based systems because I like the creativity that comes with the limitations within the class. Yeah. From them. Okay. Time for the disclaimer. So we, you know, <laughs> if you've been around, you know we have disclaimers for the show. And mm -hmm. this episode became more complicated. As than, we were writing it. As we were writing, we realized it's a deeper topic than appearance customization. Yes. So when you customize your gameplay, it's never zero. It's never zero. Inherently, always, by the rules of a game, always choices. there's always a choice in how you play because it, it's not a game if you don't give the players meaningful choices mm -hmm. and agency. So it's never going to be a zero. Unlike clothing and model and options and appearance options where the, you sometimes just can you have just, zero. You yeah, can sometimes have you no, have no choice. No choice at all. Mm -hmm. This will always, I think the lowest... It's like is a one. One or a point five. Yeah. I don't know. A clicker game, you can choose to click faster. I don't know. <laughs> right, but those aren't real games. But there's so much <laughs> diversity mm -hmm. in mechanics of how you can shape your gameplay. Yeah. So what this game actually warped into is what this episode warped into is like another talk about game mechanics. About progression. And progression. Different progression systems. And how the games progression systems create meaningful choices in mm -hmm. gameplay for players and how you can customize the yeah <laughs> how you and, can customize your progression and so we what it looks like. again are going to be talking about progression systems a bit here so we did that in episode 22 where we mm -hmm. talked about character versus player progression and gave an overview of what progression systems are yeah so we'll give you a refresher here but we're going to talk about the mechanics within the progression system that we think really enable meaningful gameplay choices. Mm -hmm. And then we're, we have the list of the same games from last episode. Yeah. Oh, well, let's write in Terraria. Write in Terraria. Terraria. How do we forget that? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we can't do Black Desert because we know nothing we about We don't know. <laughs> we don't know the gameplay of Black Desert. But we're going to go through those games and we're going to rate them on a 1 to 10 scale of what we think how well the game we think the game allows you to choose your gameplay experience mm -hmm. there. And so this one might be a little more all over the place yeah. because it's just more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more. It's not yeah. as it's not clear cut. Yes, it's not as clear cut and we want to say here in the disclaimer as well. Again, we are RPG We're single RPGs. character player. Nerds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that is the lens that we'll be using. So if we're missing obvious mechanics, like I don't know, mechanics from Call of Duty. I I don't I don't know. Strategy I don't know. games. 
those are games. I'm an RPG person. We are not. We don't have experience with. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that is the disclaimer. Mm -hmm. But so now we need to touch on what Episode a progression 22. system is. Oh. All mechanics. <laughs> Wait. The progression system dictates what tools for completing a game are provided to the player and when they are provided. Mm -hmm. So gameplay will change over time yes. as you progress. And so all of the mechanics that are built into a game are part of this progression mm -hmm. system. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through some of the most significant of these mechanics mm -hmm. yeah. and just walk through it with some games. Uh, through, and what they look like in games mm -hmm. and how they allow you to choose your some examples. So, first mechanic, levels. We like numbers. The most basic <laughs> way to up. progress is leveling up. Start at either level zero or level one, and you go from there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just straight up leveling up through experience points or some other kind of currency that is awarded to the player as they play. And then leveling up increases various attributes, most of which are a choice left up to the player. So like, say I go to level two, I get a point to put into any of my six stats. I want to put it into strength. That is a player choice. That is customization. Mm -hmm. That is going to change how you play moving forward. Yes. And so this can look numerical. This mm -hmm. can look like a WoW, classic WoW, or a WoW from one. You move one level up at a time. Mm -hmm. You get experience. This is a lot of the games that we play. Yeah. You, you see the number go up from as you, you get experience. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the Dark Souls Wow, as well. Dark Souls, It's going to be a Baldur's Gate. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's no levels. In the traditional sense, there's yeah. milestones. I think Terraria is a really good example of this because mm -hmm. the milestones are the bosses that you're able to beat. Mm -hmm. So, like, you get the gear, we'll go into this in a minute, but they don't have traditional levels, but you feel like you're leveling up as you get this better stuff to fight harder things. Yes. <laughs> and so the attributes, you are not getting experience, but your attributes are increasing as you get more gear, which... We'll go there. We'll, we'll go get there. there. But <laughs> your, your numbers are still going up, it's mm -hmm. just not... Okay, it's above my head, yeah. there's a one, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so th we call these mile. I call these milestones. I think that makes sense. So think about Mario. Think about Crash Bandicoot. Think about yeah. platformers where they're not traditionally leveling up, but you're but you get like power beating ups. a boss. You're hitting a specific point in the game that gives you a new ability mm -hmm. to do the game better. Yeah. Different. Crash Bandicoot, you mm -hmm. have the levels, and after each time you beat a level, you get a new like ability that you can use. Mm -hmm. And Mario games are really good for this. Mm -hmm. Where I think about Mario Sunshine, where you unlock, you have your backpack, the flood backpack, and the water backpack, and as you do it, you get new attachments. When you were saying Mario Sunshine, I was thinking of Mario Galaxy, and I mm -hmm. was like, what backpack are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Mario Galaxy is probably a better game. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but Mario Sunshine is hilarious. Mario I Sunshine, love it. it's cute. I, that's the one I played the most, because I grew mm -hmm. up with the GameCube. And yeah. so you have your water backpack that it starts out as two modes. You can shoot it, kind of mm -hmm. like a Blastoise, or you can jetpack with it. Yeah. But as you play through the game and you hit these milestones, your jetpack will upgrade so you can do different things. We get like a rocket mode. Oh, that's cool. Right. <laughs> so there are different upgrades that function similar to a leveling, mm -hmm. leveling up the character. So leveling up is just improving what the character can do over time. Mm -hmm. We like the numerical ones. I like numbers. <laughs> Which is funny because I don't like math, but yes. I love D and D, which is math. <laughs> so let's think about B Rising too. Yes. This isn't a traditional leveling system. No, right? it's your level is based on your gear. It's a, it's like Terraria in that sense where it's a gear score based level, but mm -hmm. your number is increasing. Your gear, every piece of gear you have has a number Attached. and has higher stats as you increase. Mm -hmm. So, but leveling you as up. a character just straight up doesn't have like a level. Yes. So, Leveling yeah. up is one of the fundamental ways that the game gives you new things over time. Mm -hmm. Fundamental piece of progression that allows you to tackle the game in new ways and customize your experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. And What's this our is next a good mechanic? segue. So from leveling up, you get new abilities and skills, and they dictate what a character can do. Mm. So. At the beginning of the game, you don't have very much of these. And as you play, your gameplay customization increases um, in I a lot of RPGs. Ahead, <laughs> huh? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, by giving you these new options and layering skills together. Oh, I segued. That's what it was. Yeah, totally. So think about World of Warcraft. We're going to talk about that a lot because yes. that's what we do. And Grim Dawn. 
we'll get there. Yeah, and so it's good as we go through these mechanics, we'll talk about these similar games, mm -hmm. right? So what does it look like at the start of Dark Souls? <laughs> Depending on what class you pick, there are there are not really classes. There are just starting points. Um, you either have like one spell, mm -hmm. or you just have a couple weapons, and you hit. And that's same, it. Same thing for a while. Mm -hmm. You right? have like a single potion, mm -hmm. and yeah. So I'm thinking about a warrior. Classic WoW, level one warrior. Sword and board. You have ability, auto attack, passive ability. Mm -hmm. Mage, you have auto attack, you have under the spell and you have a passive ability mm -hmm. that's level one you there's not many ways to customize your gameplay at level one no it's because you're just starting it's trying to get you familiar with the systems so it doesn't want to overwhelm you with mm -hmm. options just yet okay so now going from abilities into class which dictates what kind of abilities you get mm -hmm. so a class is like what is your character's focus in tabletop games and video games, a character class is an occupation, profession, or role assigned to the game character to highlight and differentiate their abilities and specializations. For example, D&D. Wow. I jumped ahead again. Grim Dawn. I talked about yeah. a WoW class. <laughs> Dang it, you're the host today. I'm the host today. What are you doing? <laughs> Go away, you do the outro. <laughs> so, yeah. Class <laughs> gives you a clear direction on where to go and it dictates what kind of abilities you get. Yes. Um, but there are other there are ways to customize even within a class, like with subclasses, with what spells and what abilities you mm -hmm. choose, mm -hmm. what weapons you use. And what I so back to WoW. Yeah. A cl classic example that I go back to is a warlock. Mm -hmm. A warlock in WoW gets so many abilities. Yeah. Just so many. Your bar is full. You have. 50. I don't even think that's an exaggeration. If you Why do they get so, so, much, so many like, abilities? more than what, like mages? I don't know. Uh. I think it, a lot of it comes from the fact that warlocks have pets. Yeah, that's true. So they that's have true. Mm -hmm. spells related to those pets, but mm -hmm. there's just so many, your bar is full. Yeah. You can play, you can customize your gameplay by saying, I'm not touching any of those fire abilities, mm -hmm. I'm just going to use these shadow ones. Yeah. I'm not going to use any of these shadow abilities. I'm just going to focus on my pets. I'm going to focus on the demonology. On pets. I'm going to use a little bit of shadow. I'm going to use a little bit of fat pet. I'm going to yeah. use a little bit of fire. And so you can say, I don't like how that spell feels. I don't want to use it. And we mm -hmm. do that a lot in WoW. Yeah. Like, eh, I don't know. And then later on, 20 levels later, maybe I want to try that yeah, spell maybe I again. That now. Maybe mm -hmm. let me rethink that. And so at any time, with all of these high amount of options within the game, you can say, let me, re let, let me reassess okay. that. I mm -hmm. saw some, so what happens for me a lot is I see someone use an ability in a cool way. In an interesting way, and you're and like, like oh, oh, I can do that. That's really interesting. How can I implement that into how I play the game? I like, uh, in a while, creating just ridiculous builds, <laughs> like... Frost Nova spam mm. or Arcane Explosion spam just because I think it looks cool. <laughs> so I want to make that the best it can be. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's not a... Your gameplay is not going to be very diverse. No. You're going to hit one button over But and I over, get the option to do that. But you have the option to do exactly. that. Exactly. So that game is... The game is giving you a high amount of options mm -hmm. for that. And... But, as we alluded to... On the opposite end. The opposite end of classless. this in our opening question, there are classless builds. And I found this on Reddit from Mars Alter, and he says, he defines a classless game as as far, quote, as far as I'm concerned, a game is class-based if most of the difference between characters is determined by a single all-envelop option. The more choices you make to differentiate between otherwise similar characters, the less class-based it, it is. For example, D&D 3.0 with feats is significantly less class based whoops, <laughs> than D&D &D first edition. A-D-D. -D. Is that what it is? 1-E? Yeah. Yeah, 1-E. Yeah, okay. e. A game is effectively classless if there is no single decision point which determines a significant fraction of how a character is represented. Hmm. That is, the, I think that's the key for me. A single decision point. Yeah. At the start of World of Warcraft, you have to pick your class before you can start playing in the world. Same with with D and D. It's you ha are a person, and then you have to pick mm -hmm. a class. Otherwise, like, what are you doing? You're not playing the game. 
and <laughs> this is a s starting point. Boom. You can't mm -hmm. start the game. RuneScape, all you have to do is Outward. make your character. Yeah. And you can jump in the game. And then it's up to you how you differentiate yourself from yeah. other characters. Through so outplaying and so, trying all these different things. Essentially, is the game itself differentiating you from other players or are you as a player differentiating yourself yeah. from other players? Terraria is a classless system mm -hmm. in the sense of it has gear and things that will push you to certain builds but you don't have to to start the game pick one. Yeah. I don't have to pick a ranger. Yeah, I, I can choose to, to do a, a bow later I or I can use a yo-yo. Pick and choose. I can I use the mage gear with a bow uh -huh. Because that's my playing style. Mm -hmm. Build is different than a class. Yeah. Right? So I, I really think that's good. So a game is effectively classless if there is no single decision point that determines a significant fraction of how a character is represented. Mm -hmm. So Skyrim. It's very interesting about, we're going to talk about Outward real quick. Mm. Yeah, tell, tell me about it. Outward, there is a decision point. You don't start off as choosing a class or whatever, but there is a decision point in the game where you can either choose to have magic or not. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that doesn't determine like what you're gonna use that magic energy on, but I think that is interesting. I still, I would- I think it is still classless. Still classless. Because there are- But because that decision doesn't prevent you- From, from doing anything doing else. Doing the game. Yeah. And even if you make that decision, you can still use every other thing. That's fact, true. Mm -hmm. Factor that doesn't require magic. I like Outward. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the best classless. Yes. <laughs> so you, you hop into WoW. Mm. I drop drop in, and I pick a mage. You're a mage forever. There's okay. Limitations are put on to me. Mm -hmm. Benefits are given to me. Limitation. I'm instantly wrapped in limitations. Yeah. I can't use anything other than cloth gear. Yeah. Right. I cast spells, <laughs> and I will always cast spells because trying to do physical damage like with your stick is not going to be mm -hmm. as much. It's just and not as effective. So when we think about class versus class-based, classless systems, mm -hmm. people often think, and I think they're probably right in this, that a classless system allows for more gameplay customization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. And I do think that's true because more options means more... More diversity. Diversity. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful in the classless systems to not accidentally create a class. Yeah. Because what will happen is sometimes they'll make a build so strong... That, that everybody just wants to take everyone that. Everyone wants to take that mm -hmm. because that's what they feel they need to beat the content. Yeah, it's all about balancing. It's, and so... Balance is another topic, but I yeah, just we'll wanted there. to throw that in here where a classless system typically is high, higher in gameplay customization and how you can play, but the developers have to be careful not to streamline it yeah. in just the best way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's interesting what happens in some, I'm thinking about RuneScape, by the end of RuneScape, you converge, everyone converges. They're the same. Oh. <laughs> you have all the same stats. That's true. And to beat certain content, you know, you gotta use some you gotta use mage or you gotta use melee or stuff. So or it's you have interesting. To use the same the best gear. So as you progress through the game, it's how you want to, but it converges at it's the It's like end. how do you want it's to go along the journey, but you're all gonna end up at the same place. Yes. <laughs> and there's but there's still flexibility at the end to uh I still prefer to do PvP with range, mm -hmm. I still prefer mage, and I still pr prefer warrior. Yeah. I just thought that was an interesting concept that yeah. it kind of converges a little bit for RuneScape. So, next up. Yes. This um, is another, fa this is a fundamental facet of abilities and skills. Skill trees or talent trees, <laughs> mm -hmm. both. They're my favorite part of RPGs and customizing a build, because usually skill trees are just so varied, so like, even in WoW, there are the three skill trees for like the mage. There's fire, there's ice, and then there's arcane. And you can either go all in one, or you can dabble in a bunch of them mm. and just make mm -hmm. a completely unique thing. Yes. So, I love skill trees. And then uh, in Grim Dawn, it goes even further where you can pick two classes that makes a unique thing. Yeah, and Grim the Dawn's constellations. Very we'll get there in a second. And we did put up on screen there for the WoW yes. cloud talent system, so you can see. Mm -hmm. It's pretty detailed, and I've loved that system for yeah. a long time. It's very rewarding in the sense that from level 10 to max level, 
it really makes you want to just say, I'm forcing out this level because I get another talent point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get another point that gives me this passive skill or give get, me this cool thing give that me I this want. cool active ability. Mm -hmm. like, I really like fire in the mage tree because so, once you get to level yeah. 20, you get pyroblast. You get a new skill. I'm so. going to explain what skill trees are. Yes, so they are a set that. of abilities listed in a linear path, often with some or many branches, like a tree, mm -hmm. um, where across where access becomes available in sequence. As a player purchases skills in the beginning of the tree, it unlocks the next level mm -hmm. or choices of skills in the linear path. Skill trees are often themed. So fire, ice, arcane. Yes. <laughs> and are designed to encourage a particular style of play or a close, several closely tied styles of play. Skill trees are often visible to the player, showing potential abilities and potential styles of play that are available uh, through spending resources on this particular path. So yeah, that, I know so that was long. <laughs> the tree, you know, we talked about the wow one. It goes top to bottom, mm -hmm. and to get to each level of skills, you have to put five uh, level of talents. You put five in, then you can get to the next row, next row, next one. And then you can pick and then you can branching pick off from branches. There. Then Skyrim, every single skill has its own tree. It's constellation. I should have got an image for that. Uh, Path of Exile is the classic one. With where it's the it's just like it looks awesome. in this massive Salt and Sanctuary is like that too. Tree. It's a massive web yeah. of circles. Uh, and then, yeah, Grim Dawn's a really good one that we have yeah. a lot of experience with, mm -hmm. so we can touch on that. So you're, you have your single class skill tree that goes from left to right, and depending on how many points you put in, you get different skills. And there are like a few trees within a single class's skill set. But then there are also, you can have multiple classes. You can have up to two. So you can put points into both of them. It's, it's a lot. It's, a, it's so cool. Um, and then they have constellations, which aren't assigned or dictated by your classes. They are just like extra things that you can put on. Help me explain how that works. Yeah. <laughs> so constellations is the exploration mechanic in mm. the game. You go find these shrines. You kill the shrine boss or you offer it what yeah. you need and then you get a constellation point and then there are these trees of constellations we have it like up on screen the monkey the turtle whatever mm -hmm. and they will have certain attributes that you can scale into and they'll give passive abilities active abilities mm -hmm. but you that's why you explore is to find these points and it really changes your gameplay changes on how you want to do it it's so mm -hmm. customizable it might work with your class yeah it so might every, make your class better every single mm -hmm. constellation will give you passive abilities and then end with a big big either, active thing either a big active or a bigger passive mm -hmm. ability so the turtle for example you're getting defenses uh, talents along the way defensive passives and then at the end you get the big passive ability that says you just get a shield every now and then yeah so you're having a hard time surviving I'm gonna go into the turtle I need some extra I need survival defense. I mm -hmm. need some defense and then there are others that just say this damage type I'm gonna put points into it to get more fire mm -hmm. right or so like, the constellations are all yeah. all diverse and there's constellations that relate to every single ability, ability yeah. and attribute in the game so you're looking for those that match the way that you're playing the like game. do I want to do fire build mm -hmm. what constellations give me things that deal with fire mm -hmm. it's so cool and so deep grim dawn is my favorite game so far in terms of customizability with the skill trees and mm -hmm. constellations just making it such unique builds yes. is, is so fun oh it absolutely is and what I will say with grim dawn is it's very interesting it falls in this weird place of almost classless yeah it's like because you start at level classless. one you don't take a class then level two you pick one level then level 10 you pick another one mm -hmm. and then it, in these trees as you're leveling up you get points to spread across the two trees mm -hmm. but picking the class doesn't give you anything no like you now, have to put points into like the bottom bar i think we'll have up on screen to eventually get to the abilities. Yep. So you literally have to choose this. And wow, picking the class will just give you abilities. Yeah, As you level, mm -hmm. it will just give you the things that you can do. But Grim Dawn, 
picking that class, you, you still, still have to work for have it. Have to work for <laughs> and pick all of the skills that you want because mm -hmm. it's a completely 100% skill tree based game. All so the much. active abilities, all of the passive abilities mm -hmm. are with the. I should say we're not 100%. Because but because you get some stuff from gear, but we'll go into that. We'll That's get to that next. in a second. But it was really interesting that it falls. It is class based because it's the limitation of the abilities that you have access to. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's not a classless game, but it's a talent-based game. It's it very is just a very, mm -hmm. um, just a very customizable class-based. It's very deep. It's Ooh. yeah, it's From, a lot deeper than like. Regardless a class of the D &D. class you choose, mm -hmm. every single character has access to the constellations. Yes. So Any you have constellation. the constellation, and you have two very deep skill trees, and weapons can add build. Abilities mm -hmm. and attributes onto that as it's well. Insane. So we're talking about these skill trees a lot here. So how does this relate to being able to customize your experience? <laughs> um, you can make an entirely different build than anyone else, mm. most likely, unless someone like sees your build and wants to copy it exactly. Sure. Um, like my character, I picked the uh, shaman and I can't remember the druid. And I made a conjurer. Mm. And so my build was all Perfect. about conjuring. That's what it was? It was conjuring pets. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to get as many summons, mm -hmm. summoned pets that follow me around and attack for me as I could. And I put points into the different constellations yeah. to get more of them. And I think I eventually got 18 at one point. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, you did. You got the achievement for having 18, 18 out at the same time. It was so which cool. Was really cool. And then your build, you were like magic missile. <laughs> yeah, there was Spam. one ability that I liked. It, you shot a magic missile. It was called replicating missile, I think. Mm -hmm. You shoot it. When it hits, multiple sh break off and shoot and, like, directions. Bounce. So it starts at, at one. Mm -hmm. So uh, it starts out at three. So you shoot one, and then three missiles break off and go in the opposite direction. I looked for anything and everything that allowed me to enhance and copy that ability. Mm -hmm. So by the end, I was able to shoot it, and eight would break off, and then and the missiles that and... broke off had a chance to make more replicating missiles. Mm -hmm. So I'd shoot, and it'd just be like fireworks. So I just, <laughs> I love being able to take a thing that you like and push it to the max. Yeah, push it to 11. Mm -hmm. Push it to 110%, it's so good. whichever analogy you like. Mm -hmm. So skill trees are very fundamental in the RPG RPG games mm -hmm. for allowing players to choose which experience they want. Yeah, how they move through the game, yep. how they progress. And then... So we touched on this already. I don't know already, why attributes is here. <laughs> but I thought it would be important to go through attributes a little bit mm. because attributes, some games during character creator let you choose your attributes, mm. let you tweak them, thinking about a Fallout. Yeah, in Dark Souls. Thinking about a Dark Souls, mm -hmm. thinking about a Baldur's Gate. These games allow you from the beginning of the game to say, you know what, I'm taking all my points, putting all your putting points them in, in strength. Oh. Oh. Put all your points in decks. <laughs> Roll around like a monkey. Just you. <laughs> so that's another way from the inception, the... Impetus? The That's the wrong word. Conception. In the conception. Yeah, we got there. Of the we character. Know word. From the conception of you making your, your character, character, you have an idea of what you, you want to do. You have a way to start pushing your character. I'm going to put all my points into intelligence so I can do You're a lot of magic damage. Exactly. You're still at the very beginning, mm -hmm. so it's not going to have overwhelming changes mm -hmm. in a lot of games. I think attributes but also go... Will push you. They're really good for, mm -hmm. for both systems for both class and classless. Mm -hmm. Like in D&D, you want your attributes to match what you need for the class, and then for classless, you want to just be able to build off of these attributes. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, I'm going to do strength. I'm just going to hit things really hard. Yeah. <laughs> in Fallout, actually, you can fundamentally change your game before your character is even done being made. Because if you take all of your points out of intelligence, the game will, <laughs> will respond to you. Huh. It will. It'll make you dumb. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> you can make your intelligence so low in Fallout what does that, that do? you can't speak. Oh, my God. You just grunt at people. That's so funny. Yeah. I have never done that. That's yeah. hilarious. So the, from, I wanted to put attributes here because mm -hmm. these are passive ways. Because attributes are typically passive. They'll give you, they'll increase 
damage thresholds or something for you, your chance of being able to do something, mm -hmm. right? But these can warp the way that you play the game mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Yeah. And attributes are something that whatever these RPGs you're playing through, those are the what you are changing to match the way that you want to play the game, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, I want to be a better manager in Baldur's Gate. I'm going to look for absolutely everything that gives me intelligence. Um, or I'm going to move all of my points from the beginning into intelligence. I don't care how frail I am. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need strength if yeah. I cast magic. Slight tangent, what's your favorite attribute? In... In, like, D&D. &D. In D&D? &D, yeah. My favorite attribute is... A, it's really become intelligence because I think intelligence, intelligence and wisdom together, I think they're very interesting for role playing. I really like wisdom because I like perception oh, and yeah. I like to see so, everything. <laughs> I guess I and do all the play. wisdom. Things. Role playing is an aspect of gameplay. That's true. Uh, yeah, mine is is role customizing playing. Customizing your gameplay experience, mm -hmm. but I think. But for I, gameplay wise, I like dexterity. Intelligence <laughs> has been very interesting to me because. Intelligence has the way, has really stigma attached to it. Yeah. And so you can say I'm a low ca intelligence character and be like, oh, well, you're an idiot, you're, you're just dumb. dumb. But that's not true. So I have a low intelligence character. So in D&D, average is 10. I have a character that's 6. But his wisdom is max. But he's really wise. He knows people. He has high charisma. Mm -hmm. So he's not he just a dumb experience. character. He's just, it's hard for him to remember things. Mm -hmm. He gets or fixated. Or to understand he's something hard new. To understand harder concepts. But he can really empathize and understand the needs of the people mm -hmm. or situations and things that are going on. So I've had fun with the wisdom and intelligence mm. dichotomy there of, okay, how do I make this character uh, re represent the stats that this character has? Yeah. I think that from a gameplay perspective, I probably would say dex. Yeah, it, it makes you go faster. It, it determines your armor. It can, you can stealth. Armor class and yeah. stealthing. Anyway. And, uh, yes. So. Uh, segwaying from armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And, but Onto that's, gear. And that's really good because yeah. thinking about Baldur's Gate, but also D&D, yeah. &D, where Baldur's Gate comes from, you have that choice when you create your character. Mm -hmm. You roll. You can be a druid with no wisdom. That is an option. <laughs> in the very beginning of the game... These stats are going to shape the gameplay mm -hmm. from there on out. If I choose eight strength, that's going to have ramifications it's gonna for the rest of point. this campaign. Yeah. So mm -hmm. very, that's very true. Mm -hmm. And so we want, I also wanted to talk about attributes as a segue into gear. Yes. Because <laughs> gear is often used in games to give the attributes and give the abilities yes, to and, give you bonuses. and shape the mm -hmm. gameplay experience. Yeah, just to, it can use different skills depending on what you're wearing. I think in every, I, I'm not even gonna say often. It does in every RPG we yeah. play. It does shape your game. Yeah, like it changes how, but ever in RPGs it gives you passive gear, and then some games go even further to give you active abilities mm -hmm. from that gear. Thinking about a V Rising, yeah, where every single weapon type that you use has abilities that you can only access if you're using that weapon. So mm -hmm. thinking about an axe, I can dash forward, do a cleave mm -hmm. strike that will increase my attack speed, or I can throw my axes in an arc. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. these weapons will have like elemental infusions on mm -hmm. them that is another set of custom abilities. And that's the passive ability. attributes. Yeah. Yeah. So like you're, I like these axes, but I want to use frost magic mm -hmm. axes. I need to find that yes. or, or make it. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can make it. But anyway. <laughs> so yeah, gear is what your character is given. Your armor, your weapons, potions, and other items that you use that will shape your gameplay. And what you'll see here, too, I wanted to talk about this as well be in the context of a classless system. Mm -hmm. They be heavily rely on gear. They just do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are you getting your attributes if not from the things that abilities? you're getting? Mm -hmm. So uh, classless systems often rely on these skill trees as well as the gear. Yeah. Right so RuneScape doesn't have a skill tree, really. It has all of its skills it that you skills. choose to level up. Mm -hmm. It's not a tree, but it has skills that you choose to level up how you will. But all of the attributes that you get, all of that is from the gear that is on your character. Mm. If you want to be better at melee stuff, you wear melee gear. Yeah. Ranged, wizard, 
same thing, but it all comes from the armor that you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And then there are games like Baldur's Gate that say, hey, we can even give you abilities. Yeah, you or know, extra and abilities. Grim Dawn. I will get to Grim Dawn in <laughs> yes. a second. I love Grim Dawn. I guess. But yeah, in Baldur's Gate 3, like you can find a set of armor that will just fundamentally change how you play. Because mm -hmm. you're like, that's cool. I want to lean into this. Mm -hmm. Or I can't wear that. Yeah, and, and ARPGs are really known <laughs> mm -hmm. for this, too. And what I was thinking for Baldur's Gate is this piece of armor will be enchanted with like flame strike. That, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give that to my fighter. Wow. Now he can use, now now he he can can use just, flame strike. Yeah, he could throw whoa, whoa. a firebolt or a sacred flame. <laughs> that breaks the class. <laughs> I mean, not sacred flame. But opens the Sporting flexibility race. for him. Yeah. Which is super cool. So... Gear is a huge way that developers can introduce flexibility for mm -hmm. gamers into the game. Uh, and then Grim Dawn is huge, huge Because, for like, like I was talking about with my summoning a bunch of pets, some of them were just attached to gear. Like, I had, like, some gloves or something that allowed me to summon a crab. And I couldn't have gotten that without this set of gear. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't an ability part of the class. Mm -hmm. And what's super cool about Grim Dawn, too, Gems. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a gem system, and this yeah. is a, across ARPGs and RPGs mm -hmm. as well, where you can take this gem, attach it to the piece of gear that it says you can, and it'll give you a passive attribute, or it'll give you an active ability. Like it'll give you more or armor, both. <laughs> or it'll give you resistance to something, mm -hmm. or you can now shoot an ice bolt. And I think the crab actually came from an amulet. Probably. I don't know. A gem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I wouldn't have had that ability to summon a crab with with the skills that I have, with exactly. any of the classes. So it had to come from some kind of gear. And so classless systems will use these... Does... Do gems fall under our gear category? Yes. Okay, cool. I was like, <laughs> should we have to add gems its own thing? No, no it's it falls gear. into it's gear. Items. It's <laughs> items. It mm -hmm. falls into items that you get. So, yeah, I gear that you get shapes your experience. And I really love how ARPGs do this, because you'll get this legendary thing that says, oh, your fireball now shoots five. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do I make a fireball build? Yeah, <laughs> like, I want to do that. That's why I made that replicating missile build. Yeah, because you Because I found a yeah, weapon that mm -hmm. said, okay, your replicating missile splashes, so it will shoot two more missiles and now has the chance to each of those to make more missiles. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. I'm going to do, do this. <laughs> this is the build I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that, how that, okay, <sighs> makes me turn the rewires gears in my brain, brain, rewires my brain, and goes, let's change Another this. good reason, mm -hmm. I think I already said this, um, for people to like class better than classless, mm -hmm. is it gives them direction. Some people get overwhelmed yeah. with too many options. So giving them a clear-cut direction of, like, this is how you play. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'll do that. Instead of being like, I don't know what to choose. But we'll, we'll get into the pros and cons in a yeah, second. Yeah, we definitely will. I think that would that would be a, for sure fall in the cons, but yeah. we'll hop in that. So the last mechanic here that, that I saw at the end, <laughs> that I saw in some of the posts is that people, you, a lot of games will use crafting as a method to deliver some of these mechanics that we've been talking mm -hmm. about, right? To allow you to get the items that you need, to get the gear that you want, to make, get the gear that you want, to play a certain way that you mm -hmm. want. So I thought I'd t touch on like that there. Like, how world you have to craft mm -hmm. the certain weapons that you want to use. Yep. Um, so so on, it's not gems. like crafting is not it's necessarily like shaping the experience, but it, it's helping. It's helping mm -hmm. to with these other mechanics that can shape mm -hmm. the experience. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I did here what we, is I got the list of games from yes. last episode, and I thought it'd be fun to walk, run through these. And just give a 1 to 10 rating on, at, we've got about 10 minutes for this, so we'll go through kind of quickly and talk mm -hmm. like, what's, what do we think, 1 through 10, how well the game allows us to customize our mm -hmm. experience. And for Skyrim, which we'll start out here, we're going to talk about vanilla Skyrim. Yeah. Because mods are a 10 out of 10 out of customization, yeah. but that's another episode. Vanilla Skyrim with its, like, two expansions? I don't know. Yeah, we can talk about the... But whatever. Base, Skyrim, no mods. I think, hmm, it's it's really high because of the the skill trees, the the constellation skill trees, um, where you decide to put your points and what 
weapons and stuff you decide to mm -hmm. use, if you want to do magic and what kind yeah. of magic you want to use and how you want to combine those. I think it's really high. It's not the highest, so maybe like nine. That's really high. That's still really high. Okay, eight. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. But I'm like, you were talking like a seven. And then okay. like, nine is near max. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like an eight there. I think an eight. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I will say too, Skyrim falls into the classless trap that yes. I was talking about, mm -hmm. where it has two builds that are just better than everything else. Archer and Sneak. Stealth Ranger and Two-Handed Sword. Yeah. Because Two-Handed Swords have such a high range to just insta-kill. If you I get them to 75 them. health, 75%, mm -hmm. the, the, the Two-Hander will just insta-kill the thing. So that was another, that's to oh, game designers. Two-Handed, not. Be careful. <laughs> yes. To not streamline, because a lot of people are like, "Well, why wouldn't I?" Like, just why do that? would I yeah. do a custom thing and not just do sneak sneak yeah. archer? <laughs> so. so yeah, I think it. Okay. I, th I like seven because some. I'm going with seven. You can go with eight. I think eight because it it is up there. I mean, I've played it for years. I think WoW <laughs> is the totality of the game. If you're not looking just within a class, if you're looking at the game as a whole, saying, my gaming experience with WoW allows me to play all of the classes and then play all of the uh, builds within those classes, that's a lot of customization. Yeah, but like for a single character, how much can you customize the gameplay with one character? Is this what this... Because we're just talking about gameplay customization. That's per true. Per game. You're right. Um, so per game, I think WoW hits a 10. Yeah. Because think about it. You're Even right. with the... Not limited, the restricted classes there's still you can have a different build so, than someone else yeah maybe not a 10 i'll, I'll do a nine a here because a you nine. have so let's do classic you have nine classes they all have three talent trees mm -hmm. and then you are as a player those. you have 10 slots in per server to play all of those yeah that's why we've played wow so much mm -hmm. over the years is because we can return to that so that gives a lot of diversity in gameplay and there are enchantments that you can put on weapons and yeah. stuff um Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn is 10. It's, it's 10. I love it so much. You have new so constellations. Much. Like, I've been 36 talking. different class combinations. Yeah. About to be 45. Yes. With the new Coming one being new added. Ones. And then within those builds, within those trees, there's so many abilities yeah. that I've never even within touched. Within one class, <laughs> there are about like four or more trees that go this way. And then if you're thinking you about can... the totality of the game, you can play infinitely. Yes. You could literally play infinitely because then there are more abilities on the... Oh, man. On the item. Yeah, it's a 10. It's a 10. <laughs> Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Oh. Hmm. We didn't go into this very much. It's it's pretty limited mm -hmm. to what weapon do you want to use and, like, what do you want to do magic and what kind of magic do you want to mm -hmm. use, but it's not super customizable, the, I think. Each fight... I mean, it's yeah. you're, you're going to use the weapon, you're going to do what the weapon does, and you're going to dodge differently based on the weight of the mm -hmm. weapon. So I, it's definitely weapon based. It's it's weapon mm -hmm. and gear based, gear but based. I think it's still it's still like a little low. So what do you think? Like a, I think around Skyrim, maybe lower. I'm not sure. It sounds lower than Skyrim to me. Yeah. Just a little bit. Lower. So I think seven. I'm not. Elden Ring might be different. I don't oh, know. Elden I Ring. I've, I've I played a few many hours, but I get lost. I'm gonna put six out of five because I don't know. Mm. Actually, I just haven't played these. So NA <laughs> Baldur's Gate three is that's really high. Yeah, that's pretty high because there are a lot of classes in, within the game. I'd put it the same as WoW, a nine. Nine, I like mm. that. Pokemon, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is Pokemon interesting because this is a different different it's style, a completely different style of game. Game. But Pokemon has a lot of customization because, because you get to of, pick of the your team. Yeah, you have a team of six, and there are thousands of Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> so I put Pokemon Emerald first, and then we do Sword and Shield again. Mm -hmm. So my thing is with Pokemon Emerald, it's you have on the playthrough you might access like 150 because there's post uh, post game mm -hmm. so that uh, the post game has a lot of them uh, but some of the gameplay will become streamlined in the fact that you need to win the battle so you're going to use tight matchups yeah that's true 
But it's like... But you don't you can, have to. You can choose to say, I'm going to ignore type matchups and use the ones I like. I'm gonna use and I'm going to make type. it work. I'm going to take this Pachi Risu all the way to mm -hmm. competitive. And that's cool. If we put it in the terms of our class classification systems, this is class classless. Yeah. I think... I honestly think Pokemon might be a 10 because of how many options there are. All of the moves, all the different move pools and, and abilities that they get. Like, there is so much you customization. You can use all worm pools if you want. You can use all worm pools. You can use only fire types. You can use like, only pink Pokemon. Creature collectors are inherently just super customizable. I think so. Yeah, because I mean... I'm giving we should it a talk 10. about Monster Sanctuary. Oh like, yeah, Monster I'll, Sanctuary I'll put has Creature here. Collector. Well, and, yeah, 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 and skill trees. Yeah, we could talk about Monster Sanctuary. Because Monster Sanctuary has over 100 critters, and every single critter has three talent trees, and each tree Or more. Is, Sometimes they have four. Oh, well, it's three or four. I'm going ahead and giving Monster Sanctuary okay. a 10. I love that game. So the 10 for this episode means that there is just high replay value. A lot of choice. So a lot of customizability. Many, many mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What about Animal Crossing? I don't know. You can play however you want. It's kind of a sandbox. There's not like skill trees. There's not. There's no. Skill there's no trees. class. So the playing how you want is dressing is the cosmetics. Yeah. Because it's how you build your house and how, how you, you decorate your, house. your character. Mm -hmm. So how much of those we said clothing is high. Building's high, but that's not really gameplay. Like, it's the same gameplay. Though. Like, what is the gameplay? The, the gameplay, gameplay is putting on clothes and building, and that's the same every building. time. Yeah, or going, I don't I'm know. I'm going to put it's, a two. It's really low. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, we it has high customizability in the building, and so you think but it's that television. All Pokemon, all the games, regardless, have ten. I think older ones are lower. I think older ones are lower, but it's still, like, even Gen 1... There's a lot of different ways you can True. you can play. There's a lot of different team. Uh, so like the lowest we think is it goes to an eight. Yeah. Okay, so eight up to ten. Mm -hmm. In modern games, there's so many, thousands there's of so options. Many. You mm -hmm. can customize that. Okay, Overwatch. What do we think? You see, Overwatch is difficult because it's again not like an RPG like we we have talked about, but there are like probably fifty plus characters, so mm -hmm. you get to choose that. However, each character has a set move skill mm. M move set yeah so you don't get to customize their gameplay at so all So it's not using the game mechanics so these MOBA games you don't use the mechanics to change your gameplay custom to customize your gameplay you use your player skill yeah. to change the yeah. gameplay. so within the definition of this episode within the mechanics this is zero it's not zero. It's a one. It's a one. <laughs> it's a one. Because you can still make choices. Yeah, you still have the choice of which character do but I want to play. you're not putting talents in. Mm -mm. It's, uh, you're you're not, not actively choosing, not choosing what weapons, their abilities but are. But you are choosing how you play that character. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be rising. I don't think it's qu quite a ten. Because the talents and the abilities that you use, you can choose two abilities at a time. In a dash and an in a ult. dash and an ult. So you technically so you, have four you have abilities. Four, I think this is like a... Two weapon abilities past the basic attack. I think this is a nice clean seven to me. Yeah. Because, yeah, you have the... You choose your ult from yeah. six different attributes. You choose your dash, you choose two abilities, mm -hmm. and then the weapon has their abilities. Mm -hmm. I think that's a clean seven because yeah. there is diversity, but it's not immense. Mm -hmm. How world... Is a monster collector. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, well, this does have. This is decent because I think another you 10. can fight with your pets, mm -hmm. or you can let them do it. You all. just let them do it, and then and they have various different uh, skills I, and abilities, powers they can use, and like passive abilities that you mm -hmm. can breed for. There are, I guess, not shiny versions. There are all. I don't know. Not alternate so colors. think about this. Do you think Power World has the same diversity that Grim Dawn has? Because that's what we put ten now. <laughs> that's a good question. I don't. No. I don't. <laughs> Do you so think then Power maybe they should go at a nine. Nine, because it is monster collectors are very high. Yeah, so I think nine point five. Nine point five. I'll take. I'll I'll put the monster <laughs> collectors at nine point five. Nine point five. Okay. <laughs> All right, RuneScape. Just because, to me, Grim Dawn is peak. Mm. I think until RuneScape I play a different game. <laughs> is very high, mm. but not max, because there still is limitations. 
within those play styles and there's finite amounts of ways to level yeah and abilities but you can kind of go about it how you want mm -hmm. if i wanted to level all the way to 99 by just cooking bread i could so like they're, they're just doing this is cutting. very high yeah this is very very high i think this is very high just because <laughs> you can literally play however you want you can customize mm -hmm. your gameplay experience however you want yeah there there's so many in these challenge videos we see people i level all of my skills one by one at the same time mm -hmm. right level two all of them are two all of them are three and we see people that are peers that only like, love I'm defense. only going to do woodcutting. Only, only do woodcutting. <laughs> yeah, things like that. So mm -hmm. I think it is very high. So, how about a nine? I like that. Well, this one, so th I will say, for those of you at home, this rating, I don't feel this is as succinct no. as our other ratings. The other one was very we, we, objective. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you want to do pros or cons while we wrap up? We still have Terraria. Terraria. I didn't, you, didn't, you forgot Terraria. I didn't write it in. You told, I told you to write it in. Yeah, and I did. Terraria 9. Okay. <laughs> pros. Okay. So the pros of all of this stuff that we talked about um, that gives gameplay customization is player agency. Mm -hmm. I like making choices. I like that my choices matter and have weight to either the story or the way I play the game. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it reaches a wider audience. Uh, longevity, so it has more replay yeah. value to try different things, different builds, and it just feels rewarding to to level up, to get these points and put them in and have them work. Yes, it really Love does. It. Mm -hmm. But the other side of that is decision paralysis. Yeah. A lot of people find these overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Especially classless. Find choices overwhelming. And what well, you will often see is since it's so overwhelming that I don't want to think about it, I'm not going to play the game, or I'm going to pick this single thing in the game and not explore anything else. Yeah. I don't want to try. That's too much. Mm -hmm. So the class-based system, less choices, can actually be good for people that get overwhelmed easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, And then, uh, I've already said this one, but it can be not... If you don't balance your classless system... It can skew games to the best option. Yeah. Skyrim, <laughs> Stealth Ranger. I've seen so many people literally it's say, It's easy. Why wouldn't I play that? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that want to do the best thing in the game. Mm -hmm. And so, or a classless yeah. system that is, that the best thing gets figured out, people will pick that. Like, yeah. that's why, like, Grim Dawn is like, oh, it's hard to figure what out what's the best thing. What is the best thing? Thing. I don't know. Just do okay. it. Okay. <laughs> End do of anything. the hour. The outro question. What game, what no, game gives what, you the optimal? What game gives you the optimal right, amount the, of gameplay customization? Terraria. Huh. I was also going to say Grim Dawn. I'm just on a Grim Dawn kick have, right I now. I would have said But also, yeah, Terraria. <laughs> I like Terraria. It's really cool. V Risings, I do like. Mm -hmm. Could be a little more, but I do like it. And it has the gem system. But and I think RuneScape, too. RuneScape's pretty good. Like I, I, like that's I said, you so can wide open. play yeah. it however yeah. you want. Okay, well that wraps up. Thanks for listening. Thanks you BCTV for allowing us to do another episode. If you have any questions or you want to tell us, you know, how you would rate these games on uh, customizing, customizability, and customizing your gameplay experience, let us know at shareddiscovery at gmail.com. And let us know any other games with like really high customization yes. that we don't know about. Yeah, we've seen Path to Exile talent system, but we haven't tried it. So. Yeah. If you're like, it's actually not that deep, and it is streamlined, well, mm -hmm. that'd be interesting, too. But that that concludes. So thank you for joining us on episode 53 of Shared Discovery as we talk about optimizing your gameplay experience. And make sure, play some games, have some fun, and be kind to others. And sign us off. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, play games, and have fun. That was just mine rewarded. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Bye. I told you I'm the host. <laughs> yeah. See ya. <laughs>